Reach for the Sky, Universe. After nine years, we are going on in yet another journey with our favorite toys. Join me as I review Toy Story 4. What up, guys, and welcome to the Web's First Must See Comic and Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J, and as you can tell, I'm riding solo here on this video, and I am here to review the latest installment in the Toy Story franchise. That's right, I am here to review Toy Story 4. And don't worry, folks, I know the movie just came out yesterday, but this will be a completely spoiler free review, so you don't have to worry about you know, having any of the plot points ruined for you. I'm just kind of talking about Toy Story, what it means to me, and how I felt this movie added to the legacy of such a beloved franchise. So, Toy Story, like I said, has always been special to me. I was born at the perfect time for Toy Story, man. Like, I was Andy, dude. Like, that was me growing up. I had the Toy Story toys. I played with Woody all the time. Woody was actually my favorite toy. I carried him around everywhere. I would not go anywhere without him. It, it got to the point where poor guy's hand was all damaged. Like It was falling apart at the seams. It's been re-sewed together a few times. I have no idea where he is now, unfortunately, but man... I had some good times with that cowboy and you know I was just like Andy dude like I would have all these different adventures I would pretend Woody was like a Pokemon trainer and I'd use like my Pokemon plushies and Woody would like ride on Bulbasaur like it was Bullseye and I'd come up with all these different like stories and kind of I guess you would say like early editions of like fan fiction before I knew what fan fiction was like I'd insert these characters into these crazy stories just by playing with my toys and just that world it brings back so much nostalgia man a lot of simpler times and that was probably the most perfect trilogy I could have ever asked for because you know Toy Story 3 again came out at a perfect time and I know they did this on purpose because the kids who grew up on Toy Story 4 were about to go to college, you know, if they did their math right, which they did, because the year Toy Story 3 came out was the year I had graduated high school and was about to start college. You know, this was you know the first big step in my life, and Andy was at that point. And as you can see by my shelf, I still love toys. I still love collecting toys. You can see my big... Funko collection or at least a portion of it on top of my entertainment system here you can see my anime figurines on top of my bookshelf you can see my Yoshi plushie on top of my <laughs> comics I still love toys and it's because of that connection to toys um, that you know I am who I am today man I am still a kid at heart and I always will value that and Toy Story teaches you a lot of different life lessons, right? Toy Story, at first, uh, when it first came out, I was about to have a little brother. And, you know, that first movie kind of taught me to not be like Woody. Woody was jealous that a new toy was coming around and that he uh, was taking all the spotlight. He wouldn't be the favorite anymore. When I was a kid, like I said, when the first movie came out, I was about to have a little brother, my first younger sibling. And I was afraid that I wouldn't be the favorite anymore. And that's kind of how I felt. And then in Toy Story 2, it was, you know, a, a deeper emotional thing with Jesse and being forgotten and different things like that. And I don't remember exactly when that came out in my life. So, like, I can't really put an emotional stamp on Toy Story 2. But like I said, Toy Story 3 came out when I graduated high school, was about to go to college, starting this new chapter in my life. And, you know, it was officially big boy time, you know? I mean, even now, I'm 24 and I'm 25 actually, I can't count. And I am still kind of yet to figure out life, you know? Um, and 
that's why I think this movie kind of resonated with me. So, like, I'm not obviously, again, I'm not going into spoilers. I'm just going to go into, like, stuff they showed you in the trailers and, like, what I thought about it. This movie, I think it was great. Visually, it was amazing. They did all the different types of, like, textures for the different types of toys. Obviously, you know, you got Woody, who's, like, like the polyester ragdoll type of toy. You've got Buzz, who's the traditional, like, hard plastic type of action figure. And you've got somebody like Bo Peep, who is actually porcelain, like a porcelain, like, lamp fixture. And she actually looks porcelain. You can really tell by looking at Toy Story movies just how far the technology has come, and it looks so great. Visually, it is just an absolutely stunning movie. Now, story-wise, what is this movie about? So, essentially, you guys know that Andy passed off his toys to Bonnie, and now they're under Bonnie's care and ownership. So, Bonnie is going to kindergarten, and she needs a friend. And she's very scared. She's trying to learn how to adjust to this new environment. And so she uses her imagination, creativity, and boundless love to create a friend for herself, a new toy. And this new toy is Forky. And Forky is really important to helping her, like, be comfortable and kind of learn to adapt to her new environment. And Woody sees that. And so Woody wants to help Forky and nurture Forky and teach him what it means to be a toy and how important a toy's role is to a kid and a kid's development. And this movie, I don't think resonated with me as hard as like a Toy Story 3, but that's because I feel like this movie is definitely, you know how, so the first movie's definitely like that kid demographic, like, you know, learning to adjust to having a new member in the family, that type of thing that fits that kind of situation. Toy Story 2, I don't, again, don't really know where that fits in emotionally. At least it didn't really resonate that well for me. Not to say that wasn't a good movie because it was great. But, so Toy Story 3, it was all about growing up and moving on. And, you know, figuring out your place in in the world. And, you know, Toy Story 4 is a lot of that also, but mix in a little bit of, like, parenthood. And trying to figure out what you're supposed to do after that right after your role is filled what are you to do and I think that's definitely more relatable to people who have kids that are grown up now now obviously I'm not there yet I don't have kids I plan on having kids someday of course but not there yet and uh, so I didn't relate to this as much as I did with like Toy Story 3 because that came out at the time where I was going through the exact same thing Andy was going through. I wasn't going through what he was going through but there is a certain element to the movie that I did relate to but that's more in a spoiler capacity so I can't really talk about it but just know there is a relatable portion to it and I will be talking about that more in my individual Spoiler review on my main channel, Mr. Day's Reviews. So if you want to hear uh, what exactly it is about the movie that I vibed with, uh, you'll have to check that review out. But let's talk about the characters, right? So a lot of the OG cast, um, along with you know a lot of the new Bonnie's toys that we met at the end of 3, were basically cut out of this movie in favor of f- focusing more on Forky, Woody... Buzz and Bo Peep. Oh, and Captain Kaboom, who is freaking awesome. We'll talk about Captain Kaboom in a second. But basically, it's Woody reuniting with Bo, finding out kind of what Bo's outlook on life is now, um, after all her time away from Andy and Bonnie and all them. I said Bonnie. Bonnie's not her owner. Molly was her owner. But yeah, we get to see how Bo has changed and what her outlook on life is now and it's really interesting and you know we kind of see Woody figure out what he wants to do now that he's not really the favorite toy anymore but it's not the same kind of situation as Toy Story 1. It's more like you know he's already kind of fulfilled his mission right like He helped Andy grow up. He helped Andy through all his ups and downs. And he was there for Bonnie. 
But Bonnie doesn't need him in the same way Andy did. Bonnie has connections with other toys like Jesse and Buzz. Woody, she loves Woody, but he isn't needed as much as he was before. And that's kind of something he has to adjust to and he has to come to grips with himself. And that's why he put so much importance in helping Forky. Because Forky is a toy that Bonnie needs. And Woody recognizes this and he wants to make sure that Bonnie will be okay. And this just goes to show Woody's character development throughout the franchise, man. He started off as this arrogant, obnoxious, you know, controlling cowboy. And now he's completely selfless. And all he cares about is the happiness of his kid. So much so that he doesn't really even begin to consider his own happiness, which I'm going to talk about more in detail in my individual review. But yeah, that's pretty much kind of what the story is about. And, you know, I loved these new characters. I'm a little sad that we didn't get to see the OGs like Ham, Rex, and Slinky, but at the same time, I feel like that was smart because you needed to focus up on Bo Peep and the new characters to get us to care more. And it definitely helped us care, helped us feel for them and understand them more. And none of these characters, pun intended, were two-dimensional at all. And I thought that was great. I thought the comedic performances from Keegan-Michael P. and Jordan Peele were amazing as Ducky and Bunny. They're definitely show stealers. They had me cracking up out loud in the theater. Loved them. I really enjoyed Bo Peep. She is freaking awesome. Although, like, I watched the Toy Story trilogy recently um, to kind of refresh myself. You know, I watch it all the time, especially with my niece now because I have an excuse to watch it, even though I really didn't need an excuse. But anyway, so I rewatched the Toy Story trilogy like a couple days ago, and I, re I noticed that like, Bo was a lot more like flirtatious and you know, a little bit aggressive when I came to Woody. Like she would constantly be smooching and planting one on him. I mean, and in here, like they, they just hug a lot, but that's fine, I, 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 I don't need my toys to, you know, smooch all the time or whatever. But I, I just I just thought that was a, a nice, subtle little difference that they kind of toned her down a bit because she seemed very much just kind of um, girl who likes Woody, but she definitely has her own personality here. She's very interesting, and I really like, again, her own personal outlook on what it is to be a toy. I think that's really interesting. And again, I'm going to go into more detail about that in my spoiler review. But she's really great. I think the villain of this movie, Gabby Gabby, is really good. I personally prefer her over Lonzo, to tell you the truth. And I said Lonzo, but it's actually Lotso. I prefer Gabby Gabby over Lotso Bear. Lotso Bear, he kind of just had the same motivation as like the prospector in Toy Story 2. So as much as I love Toy Story 3, I feel like Lotso was one of the parts where it was kind of weak in execution but I think the overall story was so poignant and well executed overall that like it didn't really matter but if we're just talking comparison to comparison I feel like Lotso Bear was a weaker villain compared to Gabby Gabby and in the end at least Gabby Gabby was redeemed now granted I did not want Lotso to be redeemed because what Lotso did was pretty unforgivable but still I did prefer Gabby Gabby over Lotso Bear. So, pretty interesting. She's a good villain. I liked how her arc was resolved. Uh, overall, it was a really good movie. Uh, it doesn't really hit you as hard with the feels as previous installments of Pixar movies have. And, you know, Toy Story 3 made me cry because I definitely was that kid who, you know, when he was going away to college, even though I didn't, like, go out of state, but, like, when I was getting rid of like a lot of my toys and I would give them to my cousins or other relatives or my friends' kids, you know, it's, it's definitely hard to grow up and move on. And, you know, I still haven't, you know, grown up and I don't think I ever will and I'm okay with that. And that's also something that Andy had to come to terms with. And again, that's just something that really resonated with me. And this movie 
while it didn't resonate with me as hard as Toy Story 3 did, I definitely think it's a good message. I think it was definitely necessary. Um, it had a good story and good closure for Woody's character. I don't think they could um, need to or will do a Toy Story 5. But then again, I said the same thing at the end of Toy Story 3. So, I don't know, maybe if they do end up coming up with a compelling story to tell with a further uh, arc for the character, maybe. I mean, I'm down. I'm always up for new adventures with the toys, but still, I feel like this is a great way to end it. Not quite as strong as Toy Story 3, but still a very good movie, and I did not regret it at all. I had a lot of fun. It's definitely something that parents will really love kids will enjoy and you know for those of us in between us uncles out there uncles and aunts you know we'll definitely enjoy it as well i think you should definitely go see it especially if you're a toy story fan do yourself a favor and go watch this movie it's great and uh, i forgot to mention keanu reeves plays a daredevil like evil knievel type action figure and he is awesome 2019 truly is the year of keanu reeves so definitely check out Toy Story 4 and then come back here and tell me what you guys thought about it in the comments down below as always. Don't forget to leave this video a like to let us know you enjoyed it because you know you're our favorite deputy and you've always got a friend in myself, DPZ, and C-Dubs. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos. We've got plenty of new content for you guys. I know C-Dubs is going to be covering Child's Play sometime soon, so we got like double the toy related content on two different sides of the spectrum, so enjoy that. But until next time guys, I will leave in the outro card my spoiler review of Toy Story 4 uh, that's going to be on my main channel. If you guys want to hear me talk more in depth about like the spoilery parts of the movie, definitely check that out. And I will leave linked a video YouTube's mysterious algorithm thinks you might like here on the channel. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mysterious Reviews. And like I always say, once a comic geek, always a comic geek. And once a member of the comic universe, always a member of the comic universe. Till next time, I'll catch you guys later. To infinity and beyond. Peace.